Okay, so th this is more or less how the Render Lab works. Now, I, I want to explain some of the different aspects of the Render Lab and show you how to tweak something so maybe you can get results that, that you like better. So let's look first at the ground. Now, the ground, if I double click on it, I have some options here. I have cache sa shadow visible to user, visible through transparent objects, catch lights. Second tab, color. Right now the color is set at white. If I wanted to change it to a uh, standard material, I could change it to anything from the material library. So let's look at, uh, I don't know, we'll try, um, let's try like a black pearl. Try something like that. Now we've changed it. Click on camera one location again, hit render. And you're going to notice that the background color actually influences the way that the metal looks. As you see here, I'm getting this green, this greenish tinge to the metal because the metal is reflecting the ground back up at it. So let's render this out completely and take a look at what we get. Now, you can already see that this is looking completely different. We have the green undertones here from the background material, and actually the contrast is coming out nice. I don't necessarily love uh, the greenest tinge it's getting, but the contract is improving uh, the rendering in my eyes. W one thing I've really noticed is rendering is completely subjective, and people can have different opinions. You show five people five renderings, ask them to order them from best to worst, you'll definitely get uh, five different orders. Orders. Okay, and so we validate that one and it gets put into our results folder. And there it is. We'll rename that one as well. We'll call it Second Render. So now let's click back on ground. I'm, that's all I'm going to touch on for ground. I'm going to change the material one more time to, let's try uh, cultured pearl. That will give us the white but shiny background. And let's keep moving down. Um, as you see here, the next one is the gradient dome. And the gradient dome is this uh, dome-shaped uh, dome shaped kind of semi-transparent uh, object on the screen. And if we click on Gradient Dome, as you can see, it can take an image. Um, and you could use a JPEG, but what it really is good for is um, HDRIs, which are high dynamic range imaging. And uh, go ahead, check that out on Wiki, HDRI. Wikipedia will tell you all about what that is. Um, Okay, so under my fixed data, you see I have a few HDRs, uh, well, HDRIs that come with uh, 3Design. These are not my favorites to use. I do not get the best results with them. Um, so I have found I have found some free HDRIs on um, the internet that uh, I'm having more luck with. So right now I have it set to this HDRI three, and it gives you a preview of what it looks like. And basically, it's just it's. If you were to stand in the center of a room and look out, it's, it's a picture that's kind of wrapped onto a dome. The HDRI gives lighting. It's called image-based lighting. So as you can see, I have some dark spots, I have some white spots, etc. So those spots, if we look at the results we've rendered out so far, are these spots here. And also, if you look on every prong, it has the same spots. Those are the lighting environment reflecting down on it. So um, I've given you, built into this um, file, Studio HDRI 3. So I've given you Studio HDRI 3, and uh, feel free to use that. But, you know, do some Google searches, free HDRIs, purchase HDRIs, and you, you can find these HDRIs, and it's going to give you better reflections. So that's all I'm going to talk about for Gradient Dome. We have that. Uh, simulate Shadows. What Simulate Shadows does, if I look at our results, 
You see at the bottom here how it's darkened? That's what Simulate Shadows does. It, it basically gives some reflection onto the ground. So it, instead of your ring looking like it's floating, it's kind of grounded with this reflection. So Simulate the Shadows is all laid out for you. Camera locations is pretty self-explanatory. And uh, lights. Let's talk about actual lighting. So we have the image-based lighting from the HDRI, but we also have these direct lights. And this is my spotlight, and this is my strip light. Okay, so if I look at the strip light, um, I have intensity. That's really all you're going to want to play with. Uh, let, let's keep everything the same. We'll do one more render using the first camera location again. Hit render. I can already tell that I like the white pearl background, but I don't like the reflections that I'm getting off of it. As you can see, it's washing out in this corner. Let's let it render out completely, and then we will try to adjust that. Okay, great. So, uh, as you can see, the background color on the top looks really nice, but we're getting this weird whitish yellow washout going on in the corner. So let's see if we can fix that using our lighting. Let's take the strip light and turn down the intensity and we'll leave the spotlight intensity well, we'll turn down the spotlight intensity a touch as well to there. And we'll try rendering it out again. Now, I already see that the contrast is much better. Okay, and you can see that we did improve it. You know, I, I don't love the background color. When we lowered the lights, it took on this green shade. But, you know, lowering the lights brought out the contrast in the metal, and it looks much better. Now, the, the reason I'm doing this, and I, ju I just want to show, everybody's always asking, how do we make a rendering? The thing about rendering is... Everything in the scene influences the render. You put a different object in there with different materials, and the render will look different. So it's not just as simple as taking the rendering lab, throwing your object in, and boom, you're going to get this beautiful photorealistic render. No, you have to tweak it and adjust it little by little. And the main things that we're going to be adjusting are the materials themselves, the lighting, the HDRI, or the image-based lighting, the gradient dome, and the ground. Those are kind of the main areas that we can adjust to make our rendering look good. Now I'm going to show one last thing that I think makes the best rendering. So what we'll do is double-click on the ground. And under this object eyeball right here, the object properties, I'm going to make vi turn off visible to user. I'm going to select the camera location again and hit render. Now you can see it's starting off and it looks like it's rendering it with the black background. And it kind of is. But once it's done rendering, I'll show you the power of rendering with the ground visibility turned off. Okay, so when the rendering is complete, you're going to see that we have this transparent. Uh, this kind of checkerboard, um, and that indicates a transparent background. Any of you familiar with uh, Photoshop would have seen this before. So let's go ahead and validate this. Actually, we can rename it here, so I'll call it uh, Render Transparent. Now, the key to this one is you have to export it in a special way. We're going to export it as a PNG, because PNGs allow for transparencies and JPEGs do not. So save it to the desktop. And now if you have Photoshop, you can do a lot of really fancy tricks with a transparent image. But since I do not have Photoshop on this machine, so um, if I open this up with Paint, which is just the uh, standard Windows uh, paint, paint tool, you see it comes in with uh, a white background. And now if I save as, change it to JPG, it's going to warn me the transparency will be lost, and I say OK. And now we look here, and we have 
the ring on a white background. Now the reason I do this instead of just making the background white is this white background is not affected at all by reflections or by light. It's it's completely white. The only thing we have is the simulate shadows where it shades it to make the ring look like it's glued to the ground. So on most of my renderings, this is the trick that I'm doing to make them really pop and to get away from having different uh, backgrounds in every one because this kind of standardizes the look. So. Yeah, th that's our new rendering lab, and this will definitely not be the last uh, VDS we do on rendering. I need to touch on videos, I'll touch on building your own labs sometime in the future, but we've been getting a lot of requests, so I wanted to kind of put this VTF together for you and put this video together for you so you could at least get started. And I actually have some um, self-serving motivation in doing this. What I want you all to do is watch me one more time. I'm going to click on the camera one and I'm gonna change my resolution to custom and I'm gonna make the height 2400 and I'm gonna make the length 3000 okay now this is a huge resolution this is the resolution required for me to submit images to magazines trade show magazines etc etc and I am always on the hunt for user submissions so I'm asking you all please you know how to do it set up this render studio just this way with the transparent background change the resolution of the camera to 3000 by 2400 validate that and render out these very high resolution images for me. We'll wait till this is done. I'll finish up the um, explanation of what I need you to do, but I want you all to please, please, please send me all your best renderings uh, along with the credits you want given, and I will make sure that uh, if they are used in a magazine or on a website or in our marketing, that your company gets credit. It's a way for you to get some uh, you know, free publicity, and it's a way for us at Vision Numeric to show people how powerful the three design package is. Okay, so this rendering is doing its uh, last passes, and there is the final image. Great, so there's the render final. We're going to export it as a PNG to the desktop. And then you can just go ahead and send me the PNG. Those are the types of files that I need for uh, my purposes. So just to quickly recap, we're using the new render lab, VTF, and um, that makes up the reference object is the stone, which is still left in the part. You have to have something in the part as the uh, placeholder. We've prepped our files and exported them as SMBs, so they're in our symbol library. If they're not showing up, hit the refresh sign, and that'll bring the newest ones up. Inside of the render lab, we have ground, gradient dome, simulate shadows, camera locations, and reference object. And set material is what I did to the import object, just so I could set it as the reference uh, object and then make changes as I wanted. So I hope uh, you got a lot out of Let's Get Ready to Render. Rendering is a complicated topic. Um, it's distinct. That's the one thing I want you to take away from this, is that rendering and coming up with a beautiful image like the one on the screen and creating a piece of jewelry are distinct from one another. They're distinct skills, and they take um, practice that don't really have much to do with one another. Making a beautiful image, you don't need to be a beautiful jeweler, and to make a beautiful piece of jewelry, you don't need to be able to make the beautiful image. The trick and the benefit with 3Design is getting to a place where you can make a beautiful render and then make a piece of jewelry that lives up to that rendering. So as always, get up on the forum, post your feedback. If you have any questions, get in touch with your territory manager, and most importantly, start sending me your renderings. I'm Joshua St. John, 3Design NYC. Go make some beautiful stuff.